Hey everybody, this is Andrew here with the Tower E-Bike Repair Shop. And today we're gonna to be talking about e-bike batteries and some good practices and just helpful information you should know to make sure your battery lasts as long as it can. So if you look at the table in front of me, I do have some batteries here. Um, you know, these are just kind of some examples of battery styles on the market. We have our tower one here on the right, got one that slots into like a seat post here on the left. And then we've sort of got a, a bare one of what it might look like without the shell. And then here on my far left, I do actually have sort of a, an unshelled battery and what it actually looks like unwrapped and completely bare. And you can see it's got bunches of these teeny tiny little cells routed up together to give you the full on battery. Now, one of the biggest things that's gonna play into the lifespan of your battery is very simply gonna be the quality of cells chosen in the battery. You know, there's a lot of cells on the market and there's a wide range of quality of those cells. Generally, what you want to look for with the cells is that you're getting one from a good reputable brand. Some of the best brands on the market for battery cells are going to be Samsung, LG, and Panasonic. Those three are some of the main ones you're going to find. They perform fantastically and are going to give you your best performance. Now, there are a lot of sort of third party cells that are on the market. A lot of brands choose to use and you know, these cells may be totally fine, but you're definitely not going to get the same quality or lifespan that you do with a Samsung, LG, or Panasonic cell. So if you're shopping for a new e-bike or looking for a new battery, you definitely want to keep an eye out for name brand cells. Definitely something you want. And typically brands, if they're paying a little extra to get name brand batteries, you better believe they're going to tell you about it in the specs. They don't want to spend a bunch of money getting nice cells and then not tell anybody about it. They're absolutely going to advertise the fact that they use nice quality cells. So if you do see some e-bike specs and they don't list who the manufacturer of the cells are, there's a strong chance they're going to be slightly lower quality third party cells. Some other practices that's going to increase the lifespan of your battery is going to be the charging of the battery and how you do it. Now it's something people have been talking about for years and years and years in batteries and they've argued and argued and there have been case studies on case studies and that is what should you do with your battery should you drain it to absolute zero before recharging it the answer is no you should absolutely never drop your battery down to absolute zero before recharging it now there are two main reasons you want to do that one the first reason you're going to want to do that is or not do that as the case may be is draining your battery down to absolute zero and then recharging it, they've actually found negatively affects your battery long-term. They found the sooner you get it recharging, the longer lifespan and more recharge cycles you are going to have. Now you can find lots of studies on this online. Um, there's a lot of information about it. I could go on, but that is the key point is draining it down to absolute zero long-term will negatively affect the cells. But the other bigger reason why you never wanna let your battery drop to absolute zero is a lot of times if an e-bike battery drops to absolute zero, the stock charger it comes with will not be able to give it more juice. We see it a lot here in the shop. It's always the same story. The bike's been sitting for a long, long time, hasn't been charged or anything, and they tried to plug it in and it just would not take a charge. Well, part of that is the battery has zero juice inside of it. When a battery has zero juice, realistically the battery is just kind of not alive and it can't interface with the charger. So one of the things you, you can potentially do is you can potentially put like a little jump charge in there, but I would definitely avoid doing that unless you know what you're doing. There's a good and a bad about it. If your battery did drop to absolute zero and that is the problem, it could potentially give it that little bit of extra juice it needs to then fully charge and be good to go. But on the other side of things, if that's not the case of what's going on, you can end up actually frying your semi-functional battery to make it absolutely not work. So definitely do not try to jump charge your batteries unless you know what you're doing. If you're having problems with your battery, definitely recommend contacting either the manufacturer of the e-bike or battery or some e-bike or electrician professional in your area. Very important. These batteries are very strong, very expensive. It's best not to mess with them and leave it to the professionals. One last thing I wanna talk about with e-bike batteries and that is very important and that is temperature. The number one thing that's bad for these things, heat. Heat is terrible for these high strength lithium ion cells. So if you live somewhere where it's hot, somewhere like Texas or Arizona or New Mexico or Southern California, do not store your batteries with the bike in a shed, in a garage, or even worse, outdoors. That heat is going to be horrible for these batteries. You can store your bike out there or in a garage or in a shed, but take the battery off, bring it inside with you, store it in a nice cool spot, 
where it's away from the elements and away from too much heat. Now, sort of on the other side of things, when it comes to cold, it can negatively affect the batteries as well. Now, it's not nearly as detrimental as the heat, but for those of you that do live in colder climates, you should be aware of this. If you live somewhere where it gets below freezing, you should not charge your e-bike battery if it is below freezing. You should let the battery warm up a little bit, bring it inside to your house where it's a nice ambient temperature, let it sit for a little while before plugging it in, or take it out for a ride around the block before plugging it in. Because the big thing is if these cells are below freezing and juice starts running through them, it can actually start to break the cells and you're gonna kill the lifespan of the battery. So again, something simple enough, I always recommend storing your battery inside regardless where you live, whether it's hot, cold, in between, always store your e-bike battery inside your house with you. It's one of the best things you can do for the lifespan of the battery. We've talked about all these tips and tricks to increase the lifespan of your battery. What is an average lifespan of battery? Now, batteries, again, there's a lot of factors that play in. The cells, how you store them, how you charge them, a lot comes into play. You can get a big range of batteries. You can get anywhere from 300 miles from a battery, all the way potentially 5,000 miles from a battery, and those are charge cycles. 300 charge cycles, up to 5,000 charge cycles. Again, there's a lot that plays in there. More than likely, you're gonna be somewhere in the middle of there for charge cycles before your battery goes out. But if you follow these tips and tricks, you will extend that life as long as you possibly can. So have any questions? Do you have any tips on batteries? Be sure to let us know. And thanks for joining us, and I hope you have a great day.